Hello, and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I just finished up a four-part series of modeling sci-fi buildings, and I thought I would round out this entire project by creating a sci-fi texture here in Photoshop to apply to the models for rendering. So to start off with, I'm going to come up here to File, New, Create a New File. I want to create it 1200 by 1200 and I want high resolution so I'm going to set the DPI to 600. Click OK. Now with this background layer I'm going to come up here to Filter, Render and Clouds and I want to make sure that my default colors here are black and white or white and black. And now that I've got my cloud layer I'm going to come up here to Filter, Pixelate, and mosaic and I want a grid size of 60 of 80 here click OK filter stylize and I want to emboss now I want these um, settings right here height of 3 amount 99 oh it can be 110 98 I really wouldn't know the difference but I uh, I, I don't want it to be overpowering so 99 100 something like that now this material, this, this texture that we're going to be creating is going to be very detailed. It's going to have lots of layers on it. And because it has lots of layers on it, I don't want one, I don't want any of the layers to be so overpowering and to be so strong that it diminishes the effects of the layers on top of it. So that's why I want these fairly conservative settings for this base layer. I'm going to create a new layer above that. Filter, Render, and Clouds. Now I'm going to come up here to Filter, Pixelate, and I'm going to hit Mosaic. And I want a grid size or a cell size of 20. Come back, Filter, Stylize, and I want to use Find Edges. Now I'm going to zoom in here <coughs> just a little bit. I'm going to hit Control L to bring up my levels. This, I want these dark lines, but I don't want this much. This, um, so I'm going to come over here and bring up my whiteness slider until I have a pretty nice random look here. And. I like that. I, le I want lots of open area, but I want a, uh, a lot of lines that show a lot of uh, detail here. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I want to do, and let me close this. We won't be using, we won't be using any of that. My layers are going to start building up here. What I want to do is I want to keep all these dark lines, but I don't want the white. So I'm going to come over here to my Channels tab, hold down Control, and I'm going to click on this thumbnail right here that's right next to RGB. And what that does is it loads the luminosity of this la layer as a selection. So I can come back to Layers and hit Delete, Control D to deselect, and now I've got all that detail minus the white. So what I'm going to do is come over here to Fill. I'm going to bring the fill of that level all the way down to zero. I'm going to double click. And you can also do it here. You can uh, bring the fill level down to zero. I'm going to come over to Emboss. And I'm going to click on Hard Chisel. And I'm going to click OK because I want to start zooming in here. And you can start seeing the detail that's going to start coming out of this. I'm going to bring my size down to 1, hard chisel, outer bevel, and now you start seeing I'm getting some cool looking effect. I think I'm going to stick it, keep it on, well let's try inner bevel, but I'm going to change the contour of this. Find something that looks pleasing. And I think I'll go with this one. Now this one here is a custom profile that I created and I saved it. Essentially all I did is create these points 
and you can't and tried I tried to make them as vertical as I could if you get it completely vertical your your little control point will just disappear on you so you got to stretch it up just about as far as you can and then just release so have it come up over down over and then up and it creates this profile and I can play with the level of my shadows and the level of my highlights and I like that I'm gonna go with that let me zoom out a little bit now when I start zooming out too far I lose the level of preciseness of this layer style so it looks better when it's zoomed in now at any time at any time if I want more detail I can just copy a layer and come over here to edit transform flip it horizontal edit transform and flip it vertical and it'll give me a whole and it'll uh, you know reverse and mirror the duplicated layer but I think one layer is enough for now I'm gonna hide that come down to background I'm gonna create another layer and on up to filter render clouds filter come down to stylize and I want to use the excuse me uh, pixelate I want to use the mosaic filter here I'm going to type in a number of five <coughs> let me zoom in a little bit now I'm going to come up to filter stylize find edges control L to bring up my levels and I want to remove a lot of this information all a lot of that color information and increase the white and I think that should be pretty good click OK click on channels control click on the thumbnail next to RGB come back to layers delete control D to deselect now I'm gonna start off using the same layer effects on this previous layer and I'm just gonna copy them onto this layer so I'm gonna hold down control and then drag that effects icon right down over onto this level and you see I've already got some detail what I want to do also is bring the fill of that level down now let's play around with some of the variables here let's try bringing this back to its original setting uh, that's a little much the thing that's neat about this is you find a profile that you like and you can copy it and use it on several others or just play around and look at one that you uh, that you do like and uh, I mean with with the ability to change the contour you've got so many multiple variables that there is just no way you can't find something that you don't like I think I like this one but I do want to bring the highlight down and maybe bring some of this up a little bit let's change that to smooth some highlight no it's not going to give me any highlight there let's uh, play with the contour on this one a little bit it's simply a matter of playing around till you find something that you like and I'm gonna go with this let me zoom out 
Um, can't zoom out too far. Okay, I like that. Let's see what happens if I double uh, duplicate that layer. <coughs> and I'm just going to move it around. And I'm just going to do it clockwise instead of the uh, the other way. That adds a lot of nice detail. You end up starting to get the effect of like this is a spaceship hull material. So I like that. Let's re-enable the one above it. And as you see, we start working with fine details, and then this one is a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, larger detail. Now we're going to create another one above that. Filter, render clouds, filter pixelate, mosaic. I'm going to make this one 80. And I'm going to hide that one for right now. I'm going to create another one above it. Actually, I'll just duplicate it. And I'll hide the other ones. Because of all these layer styles are interactive, and pretty much, uh, um, I guess, like real time, the uh, performance of this starts slowing down considerably. So with that one, I'm going to create another duplicate on that above it. Now what I want to do is stretch this really tall and commit to that. Let me cut off the excess. I'm going to take this and I'm going to transform and I'm just going to turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. Come over here to overlay. Whoops. And I'll, let me zoom in. Now I've got a lot of long stretched uh, cubes as well as some regular square cubes. So I'm going to hold down shift and select both of them merge those layers together. Come up here to filter, stylize, find edges, control L to bring up my levels. And I want to remove some of some of those lines. That'll work. And unfortunately, a whole bunch more creep in, so I'm going to have to probably remove more than I, than I actually want. Let me try level one more time. See if I can get this to commit. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to come over here to Channels, Control, click on the RGB, come back to Layers, remove that. Control D to deselect. Hold down Alt and copy the layer, the effects of that layer onto this new one. Now with this one, I want con uh, contour. I want this custom profile that I created. Come back to bevel and emboss. Chisel hard. I want pillow emboss because that creates a double outline. And I want to bring the fill of that all the way down. Now I'm, I'm kind of torn between either pillow emboss or emboss. They, uh, they perform almost identically. And if we play around with some of these, let's see what this looks like if we zoom in a little bit. Has a whole totally different effect when you zoom in, so maybe I need to keep stay zoomed in. Actually, I kind of I like that profile, but I think I do want to bring some of the highlight and shadows down. 
because once again I don't want any single layer to be so overpowering and once I'm done with this and I've created all my layers I'm going to also want to go back and do some fine tuning because I will then be able to determine uh, which ones are starting to overpower the others. So what am I going to do with this one here? I'm going to bring this one all the way down to the bottom. And all I want to do is use this layer to add a little bit of color, a little bit of shading to my base layer down here. So that's with it off, that's with it on. In my opinion, it adds a little bit more of a sci-fi look. I'm going to click on this first effects layer, hold down shift, click on the next one, and I'm just going to drag these down over this folder icon. It creates a group. Now I can just quickly toggle this on and off. So on this black and white layer, I'm going to come up here to Adobe Bridge, and what I want to do is I want to find a metal texture that I can use the color information from, and I think this one will work. I just want to overlay it onto this document, and you'll see what I'm going to do here. Just to add a little color to this texture, resize it, come down here to either overlay or I think I'll choose soft light and I'm going to bring the opacity down and that just creates a little texture on that. I'm going to come back to Adobe Bridge and find another metal texture and I think I like that one so I'm going to drag this one over and use this one also. Click OK to that. Now I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to hide the top one. This bottom one here, I'm going to come up here to Image, Adjustments, and I want to desaturate and remove all the color information from that. Now I'm going to come up here to Filter, Stylize, and Emboss. And that gives me a nice grainy uh, texture to this. And I like that. Now I'm going to come over here and set it to either overlay or soft light. And I think overlay is a little too harsh, so I'll hit soft light and maybe dial down the opacity of it so it's not, once again, so overpowering. Now I'll come back to this top one and I will use this just like I did the other color one and just bring in a little bit more color into this texture here. Let's re-enable this top group of effects and let's zoom in and this is a really cool Griebel-ish sci-fi texture done right here in Photoshop very easily now what I'm going to do is just come back <coughs> and play with the settings of each of these layers just to enhance them a little bit more and I'll be right back. Okay, I played around with a bunch of the settings on many of the various levels and this is uh, what I've come up with for a really neat looking sci-fi texture that's very believable and it works very well with sci-fi building. So that's it for this tutorial and the, and the entire sci-fi modeling project. So I hope you can benefit from this and use it on many of your future projects. So thanks for watching here at Geek Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.